Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, February 21st, 2021. I'm Relay Readers at Cosner. I invite you to download the bulletin for today's service, which can be found at the link under, underneath in this video in the description on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, you can also head to our website, www.centralpresspb.com. Look for the publications link at the top of the webpage. Once you click that, you can scroll down till you see today's date, which uh, if you click it, you'll download the PDF for this, uh, for this service. Um, you can read that on a tablet or on an iPhone, or if you like, you can print it out on a printer. Uh, and then you'll be prepared for today's, uh, to follow along with today's service. Excuse me. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. Lent calls us to journey along the edge, to anticipate that final trip to Jerusalem. Lent calls us to the cutting edge, when life comes forth, the making of a new covenant. Lent calls us not only to give up something, but to also take upon ourselves as a community, the intention of true participation in the mystery of God with us. Lent calls us to confession, accountability, and preparation. Lent calls us to con concentrate upon our baptismal vocation to be a sign of the new earth. Lent calls us to face the darkness without holding a flashlight. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. But now thus says the Lord who created you, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the water, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Please join me in the prayer of confession, uh, first in unison that can be found in your bulletin, and then silently. Gracious God, you have placed us in a world of wonder, and far too often we miss it. We see what we expect, what we want to see, what fits in with our plans and visions. We are slow of heart to believe the good news that is entrusted to us. Forgive us our short-sightedness and lack of faith. <clears throat> Open our eyes and hearts that we may see your wonders, share your vision and live in love in the name of christ uh, in the name of the risen christ and now silently amen the good news in christ is that when we face ourselves and god with the awareness of our need we are given grace to grow and courage to continue the journey Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now let's turn it over to Rose Von Tungen for this week's children's sermon. Good morning, everyone. I hope you've had so much fun this week in all this snow we got. I've seen some of your pictures and it looks like you've built snowmen and made snow angels and just played out in it. And it looks so much fun, but for me, I just stayed in because it's too cold out there for me. But anyway, today I want to talk about a time after Jesus was baptized. He was led by the Spirit to go into the wilderness. Now the wilderness is a place in Jesus' time where he was located, where it was hot and dry, not very many trees. Of course, there was no people around. Jesus was led out there by the Spirit, like I said, and he stayed for 40 days. And during those 40 days, he prayed to God and talked with God, and, but he was also tempted by Satan. But this was some of the things he had to do before he could begin his ministry. Now, after Jesus was led, <clears throat> led into the wilderness, he stayed out there, like I said, for 40 days. And that's kind of like Lent. How many of you know what Lent is? Actually, this is the first Sunday in Lent. And Lent is the time where we stop and prepare ourselves for, for God. It's 40 days. Lent lasts 40 days, not including Sundays before Easter. So, we have how many days before Easter? Probably about 38 now because... 
Friday is Thursday and Friday count. It, and of course, oh well, maybe we have 37 days till Easter. But anyway, some people during Lent give up things like Jesus did while he was in the wilderness. They give up things that they like to eat or maybe drink or play games. Something that they like to do, they, they give up for those 40 days. Other people spend those 40 days doing something good for other people. Now, that's good. Either one, either way you wanted to celebrate Lent or observe Lent would be good. But most importantly, let's remember that during this time of Lent, that we need to prepare our hearts and minds for Jesus so that we can follow him and tell others about him. Let us pray. Dear God, during this time of Lent, help us to remember that Jesus is our Savior and that he is here on earth to teach us about your love. Help us to observe the Lent season, thinking of others and doing things for others. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Rose. Now let's go ahead and turn it over to Reverend Tim Reeves for this week's sermon, What Are We Giving Up? Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading this morning comes from the ninth chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning with verse 8 and proceeding through verse 17. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. <clears throat> I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Our second reading this morning comes from the first chapter of the gospel according to Mark, beginning with verse 19 or 9 and proceeding through verse 15. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear. 
that hearing we might believe and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. I believe we are being asked in today's readings one simple question. What are we giving up? It's an appropriate question to consider on this, the first Sunday of Lent. The discipline of giving something up for Lent is one way in which we exhibit the self-denial which all Christians are called to exhibit. And typically, we think of giving up those things that we ordinarily cannot live without. We pattern our own period of giving things up or fasting during Lent on the 40-day period of fasting which Jesus endured while he was being tempted in the wilderness. And more than a few will go through this discipline of giving something up, maybe even grudgingly, but with the firm belief that even if it doesn't do us any good, then it certainly won't do us any harm. Sometimes, though, I'm inclined to think that we may be merely distracting ourselves, or dare I say, fooling ourselves into believing that such brief stints of abstinence are all that discipline or discipleship entails. What, in the grand scheme of things, is giving up briefly something we presumably cannot live without compared to the self-sacrifice, the self-emptying, the unwavering trust in the ways and will of God that we are called to exhibit every day of our lives. What are we giving up? We cannot adequately answer that question until we come to terms with what it is that God has given up. Our reading from Genesis this morning tells us that God has given up quite a lot. From our earliest days in Sunday school, many of us will remember the story of Noah, of how the Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth and that every inhabit or every inclination of the thoughts of human hearts was only evil continually. And that the Lord was sorry that he had made humankind on the earth and that it grieved him to his heart. So that the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. And Noah was instructed to build an ark and to bring animals into the ark that they and Noah's family might be spared as it rained 40 days and 40 nights and all the earth was flooded and destroyed. The flood eventually subsided and God said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind for the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth nor will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done. It is after all that has, uh, all of this has taken place that we get today's passage about the rainbow, the sign of God's covenant never to destroy all of creation again. But what we so often overlook is the fact that as far as humanity was concerned, are concerned, the flood did not change anything. Humanity was evil before the flood. Humanity was evil after the flood. But what did change is how God chose to deal with that evil. That's what the rainbow was meant to symbolize. God hangs up God's bow, his weapon of war, and resolves to make peace with creation. 
In spite of having every justification to destroy humankind, God resolves never again to wage war against us. The bow will remain undrawn and pointing away from the earth. Now, we should note here that the ancient understanding of God was one in which God was a warrior. And thunderbolts were the arrows that God would sh uh, shoot at the earth. And we may think that this is a rather primitive understanding of God, but we should not let that blind us to the more significant meaning in this passage. David Loos puts it this way, the ancient world had a keen sense of both God's omnipotence and God's justice. The one who created all things also stands as judge over all things and is entitled to destroy all things when they prove so disappointing. A single or even repeated act of mercy may be accounted for by God's gracious nature, but to forego for all time the right to destroy was an unheard of surrendering of divine power. Far from exploiting God's sovereign prerogative to mete out vengeance in response to human evil, God freely imposed limits on what God was willing to do. Now, we must be clear, this does not mean that God ignores the problem of sin and evil, nor does this mean that God suddenly concedes defeat to a sinful and broken humanity. God instead has made peace with creation, but God also resolves to make peace in creation. And God accomplishes it, this through Jesus Christ. Ultimately, God does not just surrender divine power, but also God's very self. Or as we read in Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. Little wonder then that we are told that immediately after being revealed as God's son with whom God was well pleased, the spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. What kind of father would treat one's own beloved son with whom he is well pleased in such a manner? The answer is the very father who would give the sign of a rainbow as a reminder that God would never again destroy creation. For in Jesus, we find a living testimony of the lengths to which God will go to overcome evil and to love us into newness and new life. God in Christ gave up God's own self. And for all who are called by God to be disciples, the call is issued, go and do likewise. Paul put it this way in his letter to the church in Philippi, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. What are we giving up in our discipleship? Something that we ordinarily cannot live without? Or are we giving up our very selves? I thought about that on more than one occasion this week. Because if we are to be disciples of Jesus, then we must deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. It's a call to give up any and all claims that we have on our lives, or to say in all faith and humility that our lives are in God's hands, and that God can and will use us as God sees fit. As I pondered this truth, my thoughts were drawn to some other words from our confession of 1967 in our book of confessions. To be reconciled to God is to be sent into the world as God's reconciling community. This community, the church universal, 
is entrusted with God's message of reconciliation and shares God's labor of healing the enmities which separate people from God and from each other. Christ has called the church to this mission and given it the gift of the Holy Spirit. The church maintains continuity with the apostles and with Israel by faithful obedience to God's call. The life, death, resurrection, and promised coming of Jesus Christ has set the pattern for the church's mission. His life as a human involves the church in the common life of all. His service to all commits the church to work for every form of self, a form of human well-being. His suffering makes the church sensitive to all the sufferings of humanity so that it sees the face of Christ in the faces of people in every kind of need. Like I said, the call to be a disciple is a call for us to give up any and all claims that we have on our lives and to say in all faith and humility that our lives are in God's hands and that God can and will use us as God sees fit. Now, I will grant that that's a lot for us to give up but it is no more than what our God was willing to give up for each one of us. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that could be found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> Let us now return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings, which again will be made this week electronically. If you head to our website, www.centralprespb.com, click on the Donate Now link found at the top of the webpage. You can uh, make a tithe with um, credit or debit card. Um, we also invite you, if you prefer, uh, to mail a check or money order to the church, you can mail it to 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is our right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit until that most glorious day when at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our joys and concerns. Um, we were asked to keep, uh, continue to keep the family of David Perdue in our prayers. Um, we were asked to keep Charles May, whose wife Cindy was a former member of CPC in our prayers. Uh, Mr. May was admitted uh, to the hospital's ICU uh, recently, and um, I'm unaware of why he's there, but we need to keep Mr. May in our prayers. Uh, please continue to keep the Munn family in our prayers. Uh, Jessica was able to successfully make the trek to Little Rock in the snow uh, to get the leads taken out of her uh, back um, with uh, plans on replacing them with a more permanent solution. Um, Dominic has a doctor's appointment uh, this Wednesday to, to decide on a course of treatment for his leg. Um, 
uh, what else? Uh, we want to continue to keep the Brown family in our prayers. Um, uh, we want to continue to keep Brad Von Tunglin, Haley Chandler uh, in our prayers for their medical conditions. And also we want to wish a, um, a very, very happy birthday to um, Sila, who turns 10 this week on Thursday, I believe. Um, uh, and with that, uh, we also want to keep um, those who are dealing with uh, COVID-19 in our prayers and pray for a speedy delivery of the vaccine. Also, we want to continue to keep those who, uh, who are dealing with the effects of the winter weather, be it uh, lack of electricity, lack of clean water, um, spe specifically those in Texas. And I know that there's a lot of people in Pine Bluff who are dealing with water issues, including Laura and myself. Uh, we have basically no water pressure. It's been more fun that we can handle the last couple of days. <clears throat> so we want to continue to keep those people in our prayers as well. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. Please continue to be with the Brown family, the Purdue family. Uh, please continue to be with the Munn family, uh, Brian Von Tunglin, Haley Chandler and Mr. Charles May, as those individuals are dealing with medical conditions, uh, please continue to do uh, to be with those who are without clean water, uh, without electricity due to the winter storms. We thank you for the protection that you provided us during those winter storms that that nobody um, that we know immediately uh, were was greatly impacted. Uh, we ask that you continue to be uh, protection uh, to provide protection over those first responders and those who are dealing with the um, COVID-19 pandemic. We ask that uh, for a speedy delivery of the vaccine, and we ask that you be with um, all, uh, reconcile our world to your will and way. Uh, we ask that you uh, show us. Uh, what you would like for us to do and that we heed those calls. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace, to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit, taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.